So the other day we gave you the objective pure facts and details about season two's reveal. Today, I wanted to weigh in with my input on the upcoming season and what we see so far. So this one purely subjective, whereas the other day, I just wanted to give you the details first and foremost. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. How you feeling about the upcoming season for multiplayer here in particular for Modern Warfare 2? What's it gonna take to keep you, bring you back, whatever the case, and are you looking forward to season two? What are the case, drop your thoughts below. As well, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage, but more on them later on as per the last week or so of videos. Anyways, let's get into it. Firstly, listen, I'm sure that we're going to get into what a lot of you guys are feeling here in just a second, but honestly, there was some cool stuff that was showing off for Season 2. There's a few things that I'm genuinely excited to jump into across Warzone and DMZ just as a completionist. Even though my missions are being wiped, I'm looking forward to seeing what those new challenges will be and have more stuff to grind out in DMZ. I'm looking forward to Resurgence and Ashika Island because a lot of my friends were Resurgence mains, so I'm looking forward to playing with them again. Looking forward to at least trying out ranked play, believe it or not. I think that I'm going to actually dip my toes into that quite a bit here this year. I'm certainly past my prime competitive days, if we were to call it that. I likely won't have any sort of run like I did to hold Masters Rank 1 back in Black Ops 2, but for me, just wanting something anything to grind towards the seasonal rewards and stuff like that that fingers crossed will be there will give me enough stuff to at least for a couple of weeks have some stuff to play around with i'll grind those out so like i'm not saying that there isn't anything good to look forward to in fact even when it comes to some of the modes for multiplayer that's something that those are pretty fun i definitely think that some of those should have been there if not all of them should have been there at launch but i'll play grind i'll play infected i'll play one in the chamber but when it comes to the overall offering for multiplayer that's where my disappointment sets in and it's weird because it's like this thing of like I said for weeks, just please give us more than two maps a season. And absolutely, it's nice to see four, so maybe I have to kind of eat those words, but with this particular gripe, it's not really about quantity that I'm really concerned about, it's so much the quality. Am I happy that we have four maps coming with a seasonal launch here to bolster out the offering between 6v6 and Ground War? Absolutely, four is definitely better than two. Except, I think that you'll hopefully remember my big thing was new maps. I wanted to see new maps introduced into Modern Warfare 2. I wanted to see new ideas, things that could stand on their own and give Modern Warfare 2 its own life, if that makes sense, an identity of its own, not necessarily just piggybacking off of prior identities, prior iterations of maps that were really well received and just keep coming back. To some degree, we can count Museum as that, maybe, but that's only a gray area because while it's unique to Modern Warfare 2, sure, we saw it in the beta, so it's not necessarily new, it's a returning map. To me, that should not be countered against the content that we're being delivered delivered. Honestly, I think that it should have been something unadvertised. Give us a fourth map and just put Museum back in rotation, not really even announcing it. So, gray area aside, I mean, Dome? That's the other map we get? I mean, it is a great map, sure, don't get me wrong, but it's not new by any means. In fact, it's, if my quick maths are correct, it's tied for firing range and raid as the third most seen map in COD history, falling behind just Nuketown five times and Shipment seven times across various games, Shipment also being seen in Ghost as an expanded Showtime, World War II, and Vanguard, not just exclusively those Modern Warfare games. That's the part that bothers me, I think, is that we just won't see any genuinely new maps being developed for post-launch of Modern Warfare 2 until, at the very least, five months into the game's life cycle. And that's assuming that we see something at mid-season even, which is a different thing that I want to touch on here in just a second, because that's not even guaranteed. But if we don't see a new map at mid-season, that means that just for the chance to see a map that would be designed for post-launch and would be unique to Modern Warfare 2, we'd have to wait a whole half a year for a brand new map to be introduced. Or rather, I should say, again, that chance for it to happen. So I get you want to play on nostalgia of Modern Warfare 2. I get you want to take that legacy route of the franchise. Hell, I know plenty of people who only got Modern Warfare 2019 and Modern Warfare 2 for that reason, because of the branding, the name Modern Warfare. But when you hook those players, I mean, you already have their money. So like, why not hit them with something new? Give them experiences that they will potentially enjoy and last for years to come. And if you want to play it safe, sure, throw in a remastered map here and there, but don't make it exclusively stuff that we've seen before. I mean, three out of the four maps that we've seen so far post-launch for 6v6 are remakes, remasters, reimaginations, however you want to call them, and then one map that was from the beta. So we haven't seen anything in that originality sense. Now, yes, we are getting two more battle maps as well. These ones, no, they're not original, but these, honestly and admittedly, I have less a sour taste on because it's always been that way. We have never seen a truly original battle map or large scale map like that for ground war play, unless you're talking about like arms race. That map was developed specifically for that mode within Vanguard, and it was the only one we saw. But every single ground war map from Modern Warfare 20 
2019 was pulled from Verdansk. Every single fire team map was taken from the previously scrapped Blackout 2 map. Sidebar, really interesting discussion on that. We did a video on that a while back that I'll try and annotate on screen for you guys if you're at all interested. But basically, Treyarch wanted to and started developing a Blackout successor before Warzone was ever greenlit as a free-to-play game. Because if you remember, that was actually supposed to be a Modern Warfare 2019 game mode only. But then last second, it was something that was turned into a free-to-play game standalone and having every game integrate into it. Hence why there are so many faults in the integrations as they happened, being put into an entirely different game. But again, different story, different day. So by the premise that every ground war and fire team map was part of a larger world already developed, I wasn't expecting anything to change now. In fact, we've touched on it before. I'd actually even like them to take spots of the maps we've seen so far and put them into playable MP and bolster out that offering even more. But again, only if they can end up creating original maps as well. Just don't do it in place of new ideas, which is kind of even what Dome did since it's part of the ground war map Zaya Observatory and part of the point of interest in Warzone. So in a sense, we have Dome twice in the same season two offering. Just gonna throw that out there. So that said, if these are all at launch though, all four of these, what's beyond? Because that's the other big terrifying part here to me. My biggest worry thus far is that right now, none of those maps are listed as in season, which sure is again, nice that we have four maps coming immediately at launch to bolster out that offering for content across 6v6 and ground war. But at the same time, it's equally concerning because it is very possible that we could be seeing only these. There's enough in season stuff on that roadmap that it would be a lackluster mid-season update, but it could be something that would be by standards recently of mid-season updates. I mean, Modern Warfare 2's first season here in December wasn't really all that big of a mid-season update as well. So like it could very well be similar size to that. But if that's the case, it certainly wouldn't be where we as players would hope it would be. So when I look at these, it's like a 50-50 gamble to me. On one hand, we have never seen a mid-season update since the content distribution style that we have now started with Modern Warfare 2019. We have not had a single update in mid-season without a new multiplayer map. But with all things considered and the apparent lack of interest in multiplayer's map sets and any originality, is it bad that I would not be surprised if this first card is pulled out and it's the first time we see that happen? My only like sort of, okay, maybe that won't happen. That kind of like alleviates that pressure a little bit to counter it is that we only have one operator listed for season two so far, Ronin. Another first for content distribution. We usually see three, sometimes four operators every single season with those coming in mid season as well or throughout the season. And those other ones missing not with Ronin, those would be paid operators that would come along as the season progressed. And Activision passing up free money in that sense, paid content, that doesn't really add up to me. So like, fingers crossed, but there's still that big worry and concern from my perspective on it. Now, overall, the multiplayer offering, the paid experience, to me, it's just incredibly lackluster this season again. Two maps in 6v6, neither of which are new. Two maps in Ground War, also not new, and six modes, arguably most of which should have been there, if not all of them should have been there from the beginning. I mean, from what is detailed here in the MP side of things, there's not a whole ton that will have longevity. Sure, maps can be replayed, but again, when neither of them are new, how many times are you really going to want to play Museum, Dome? You know what I mean? It's not like something where we're introducing a new camo to grind out or something like that, or like a new unlock of a major feature or something like that. We don't have anything like that. It's just kind of, all right, here's stuff you've seen before, but again. And like, that's the thing is that I was thinking about this a lot recently, especially on the multiplayer maps and other content side of things. I mean, one could maybe argue that because the offering is so large now at this point with Warzone BR, DM, multiplayer spec ops that like maybe infinity ward is spread too thin but even that logically i don't quite understand because our cod offering right now is just that mp br dmz and spec ops battle royale by all accounts seems like it was almost if not is entirely handed off to raven at this point they've been the one running all the comms since holiday and the gameplay changes being made are entirely indicative of their design philosophies Infinity Ward does not 180 like that. The changes we're seeing with the upcoming Season 2 update, that's stuff that previously Infinity Ward would not budge on. So to me, they're not the ones making those calls. And even on the design side of things, High Moon is the one that's making a Sheikah Island. So it's not like resources are coming out of Infinity Ward from the creation side of things for that either, or at least so is telegraphed so far. Maybe there's more to it behind the scenes that we don't see, but like front facing, that's the way it seems. DMZ maybe is where Infinity Ward's hands are, but beyond building 21, again, Almazra's there, Ashika Island is coming, there's no 
creation side of things going into that. It just is upkeep, which I would, in my incredibly ignorant to knowledge of game dev state, would imagine that it's much less intensive than creating a whole new map, a whole new world for that. Spec Ops, we don't have any new Spec Ops missions or content here coming besides a raid this season, which is one large map, but more linear by comparison to say like a, a ground war map or something like that. It's more so travel this path, complete the storyline rather than you being able to navigate and traverse the world of a ground war map freely and however you'd like. So that leaves multiplayer. Sizing wise, what is also the smallest of things in terms of like map sizing and creation, it just seems like everything else is paired out between things from what we've already seen, but also even multiplayer has Treyarch introducing stuff this season with ranked play. So when you consider that, that every single studio under the sun has contributed to this game in some way, shape or form, and then some continue to contribute to it with High Moon, Beanox, Raven and Treyarch, I just, I don't know that I see that argument or adhere to it that the offering is bigger, therefore we should expect less. If anything, I feel like it's the opposite. We have more and we also have way more studios than ever working on one common goal. So like, why can't we get more maps? Why can't we get more original content? Why can't we get original grinds and MP being added as time goes on? I just, it doesn't make sense to me. So it's just frustrating that this new era of COD, COD 2.0 has been marketed, was supposed to usher in like this grand future of Call of Duty, or at least so has been communicated since before launch. But when you look at it historically, we just keep going down and down in terms of content. Modern Warfare 2019, I mean, season two, that was something that we saw Warzone launch in that. So they had to prep an entire Warzone launch, a brand new game essentially in that season two offering. And we still got things like Rust, Atlas Superstore, Condor Hideout for 6v6, Bone Boneyard for Ground War and Bazaar for Gunfight. Rust was also Gunfight in there, so like five to six maps depending on your outlook for it. Season three, right after launch of Warzone and then upkeeping everything with that was Talsic Backlot, Sawmill, Ania Incursion and Hardhat for 6v6, and IO9 for Gunfight, so five maps there. Cold War, even in season two and season three, offered up four maps, but each having individual and unique maps along the way. And Vanguard, I mean, we've talked about that before, where it seems like, especially with reports coming out as of yesterday, that they're working on this upcoming year's now full-fledged title as it seems to be of a modern warfare 2 sequel perhaps a modern warfare 3 that they had to kind of ship and dip they had to ship vanguard in a very shortened time frame because previously if you guys remember they were working on black ops cold war with raven that game was not meant to be a black ops game it was meant to be a co-produced project between raven as well as sledgehammer but then sledgehammer dropped off that project treyarch got pulled in they ended up making it a black ops game and then sledgehammer had to basically scramble around to pick up something and launch it the year after that game they were supposed to make so if you ask me they were essentially picking up Vanguard because they already had the base of World War II already in place. They could already pick up with something that was already run there. So like when they do that and then have to jump to an entirely different game to then produce, create, and launch, no wonder we didn't get any maps here with that. But like Modern Warfare 2 had three years of reported unproblematic game dev time. So I mean, yeah, you're building out Almazra, you're building out DMZ and some of the fundamental systems here with that. But like when, when we just think of multiplayer, why... Why is it so neglected when there's still so much support going on elsewhere? I don't know. It's just this weird situation that for the first time, I don't want to say that I'm like unoptimistic the entire way around, because like I said, I am excited for some of those things, but like for the multiplayer side of stuff, I just feel, I feel jaded and like, I don't feel like value in that. I don't feel like a valued customer for the multiplayer side of things. I knew Vanguard from day one would be that grind. Again, we talked about that's something that essentially from day one, you didn't really have too much faith that it was going to be a full game. And that's just the circumstances of it. But this game was supposed to be that first game that was the full offering that we had seen in the last couple of years. A year that, no pun intended, or mirror to the Season 2 Warzone offering, it was supposed to be a resurgence of everything. The last couple of years were rough for players, for content creators. The last couple of years were rough for all players. I don't think that that's any sort of hot take or anything like that. I figured that we'd get a fully supported and equally supported offering along the entire way. That's my thing is that like I, I'd be less inclined to be so frustrated if it wasn't seemingly multiplayer was the only thing being neglected. Yes, season one kind of overall sucked for everything. I mean, problematic in terms of bugs, balancing, fundamental design decisions, but season two is starting to clean up that mess. And there's now actually a lot more attention to Warzone and DMZ than traditional MP. So maybe I'm just being salty, nitpicky or whatever. I mean, I hate being negative. I really do. 
It's just been so frustrating for so long to see this continue on as a sort of downward spiraling trend, less and less each individual year. So yes, on one hand, I'm happy that we are seeing four maps and fingers crossed we do get more mid-season. I just wish there was like more heart into it. And I wish that we had more unique maps, but I mean, that's the last I'll probably touch on it for a little while. I apologize to those who came to the channel for information, guides, tutorials, best class setups, whatever the case may be. And you didn't want to hear me bitch as much as I have the last few weeks. I just, I just hope we can see some positive changes, man. I just want multiplayer to be represented in a way that is actually seemingly valued season over season. So... That's where I'm at here with this. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down below. Before we wrap everything up again, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage. Best blue light glasses on the market. I'll swear by them. Most comfortable, lightweight, and durable frames out there. Clinically proven lenses. The science in the description below if you guys want to check out their website. They do so much a better job of breaking down the science and everything than I could ever possibly explain. So from now until Valentine's Day, they have 14% off on certain frames. With code ESPRESSO stacking to give you 24% off your entire order. So check that out if you guys are interested. It's seriously the best deal since the holidays and the best deal we'll see for quite some time. So now is as best of time as any if you're at all interested. But said, that's what we're going to call it. So let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, if you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD related. We do have a lot of stuff upcoming with Season 2, so stick it here on the channel if you guys are at all interested. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.